What is up, you guys? We cannot talk about linear systems without introducing applications to it, right? Real life application. In the previous lecture, I introduced an application on trusses. That is a topic in statics, which interests a lot of civil engineers. In this one, I'll give an application on electrical circuits and show how linear systems could be used to solve problems that arise in electrical circuits. So if you're familiar with electrical circuits, then one problem that arises in given a circuit with given voltages and resistors, the problem is to find the currents in the branches of the circuit. Namely, let's say I've got a current over here denoted by I1 and a current over here denoted by I2 and a current right here denoted by I2. I3. And, you know, we should solve for I1, I2, and I3. We don't know them and we would like to compute them in terms of the voltages, the DC components, and the resistors R1, R2, R3, and R4. So, since we have three unknowns that are obviously I1, I2, and I3, we need three equations, right? So, from where could we get them? Well, first of all, you should be familiar with Kirchhoff's current law that tells us that the sum of currents at a given node should sum up to zero. So for example, let's say I pick the green node, then all the currents that enter the node, they should sum up to zero. So note that I1 and I3 are entering the node, whereas I2 is leaving the node. When a current is leaving the node, we could say that the negative of this current enters the node. So we need all the currents to enter the node to say that they sum up to zero. Well, that gives us the first equation. We have the I1 plus I3 plus minus I2 because it's leaving the node should equal zero, right? Well, we need two more equations. We can't use this node right here because it will give us the same equation, right? You can go ahead and verify that. Well, we're going to make use of something else, which is Kirchhoff's voltage law. What does the voltage law say? It says that the sum of all voltages in a given loop should be zero. So how many loops do I have here? I've got loop one and loop two, right? So let's go ahead and apply Kirchhoff on loop one. So we're going to move in the same sense as this arrow. Start by this point and we should return at this point, okay? So we start, we see a plus V1, so V1. Then we walk like this. Be careful that I1 is in this sense. Since we're opposite to I1, we should say negative of the voltage at R4, which is equal to using Ohm's law, I1 times R4. Ohm's law tells you that the voltage across a resistor is the resistor value itself multiplied by the current traversing the resistor, okay? So we continue the path over here. We see a negative DC voltage, so minus V2. We continue upwards. We're also facing I2, so minus V2. R2, which is equal to I2 R2. We continue the loop. We are also facing I1, so minus VR1, that is I1 R1. Then we're back at the red dot, which should be equal to zero. Okay, so this gives us the second equation and the last equation will be obtained from loop two. So we pick a red dot, then we should return to that dot. So let's walk in this sense of loop two. So we walk as such. We see minus V2, so, so minus V2, then we're in the same direction as I3, so it is plus VR3, that is equal to I3R3, right? Then we go downwards, we are in the same sense as I2, so plus VR2, which is I2. R2. Then we see the positive terminal of the DC component, V2, so plus V2. Then we're back at the red dot, so we equate this to zero. Oh, sorry, I named this V2 as this guy, so this is a V3. Sorry about that. So I've done a notation mistake. This and this are V2. I'm going to rename this to V3, my bad. So over here, I get a minus V3, okay? So rewriting this, we get R1 plus R4 multiplied by I1 plus R2, I2 is equal to V1 minus V2. Over here, we can rewrite it as R2, I2 plus R3, I3 is V3 minus V2, okay? Also, we can rewrite this guy, first equation, as I1 minus I2 plus I3 is equal to zero. We have three equations 
and three unknowns, I1, I2, I3. So we can write this as a system of linear equations as such. So we've got a three by three coefficient matrix multiplied by the vector of unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. That is equal to zero, V1 minus V2, and V3 minus V2. Let's fill in the matrix of coefficients. We get a one minus one, one, R1 plus R4, R2, and a zero, and zero, R2, and R3. So let's give a numerical example to solve for I1, I2, I3. Well, imagine that we have the following values. V1 is equal to two volts, V2 is equal to three volts, and V3 is equal to five volts. R1 is one ohm, R2 is two ohms, R3 is, I don't know, five ohms, and R4 is three ohms. Well, let's replace in this system to get R1 plus R4, which is 1 plus 3, that is 4. R2 is 2, and a 0 over here, and a 0 over here. And R2 is 2 again, and R3 is 5, right? Multiplied by I1, I2, I3, we get 0. V1 minus V2 is 2 minus 3, that's minus 1. And V3 minus V2 is 5 minus 3, that gives us 2. So now we have a system. In unknowns, three by three system, you can use Gaussian elimination as previously done. We formulate the augmented matrix, try to null out this guy by replacing the row, the second row with R2 minus 4 R1. What do we get? R1 remains intact, so does R3. Then 4 minus 4 times 1 is 0, 2 minus 4 times minus 1, that's 6, 0 minus 4 times 1 that's minus 4. Minus 1 minus 4 times 0 remains minus 1. Now try to null out this guy. How do we do that? Well, instead of R3, you can put in R3 minus 1 over 3 R2. What do we get? Note that the first and second rows remain the same. So 0 minus a third of a 0, that's 0. 2 minus a third of a 6, that's 0. 5 minus a third of a 4, that's 19 over 3. And 2 minus a third of a minus 1, this is 7 over 3, right? Solving for I3 from the last row, we get I3 is 7 over 3 over 19 over 3, which is 7 over 19. Solving for I2, we get 6I2 minus 4I3 is minus 1, which means that I2 is 4I3 minus 1 over 6. That is 28 over 19 minus 1 over 6, which is 9 over 19 over 6 not least let's solve for so I've got a small mistake here this is 1 and was never changed so this guy is 1 and this guy is a 1 sorry my bad so in this equation we get I1 is I2 minus I3 that is 3 over 38 minus 7 over 19 which is 3 minus 14 over 38 and that is minus 11 over 38 so the solutions are here this guy is I1, this is I2, and here is I3. So just one comment on electrical circuits. So I2 and I3 are positive, and I1 is negative. Well, what does that mean? Going back to the circuit, I2 and I3 being positive means that their sense, as is on the figure, is correct. I2 moves from the green dot downwards, and I3 moves upwards as shown. Since I1 is negative, then we should invert its sense. So it is not moving upward, we say it moves downwards with a magnitude of course of the one we derived, 11 over 38. Okay, so in this lecture we applied linear systems on a problem that arises frequently in electrical circuits. If an electrical circuit has one or more batteries or DC components and consists entirely of resistors, only resistors, <laughs> no capacitors, no inductors, then the currents in the circuit are found by solving just a simple linear system determined by the relationship V equal IR, that is Ohm's law. You can just apply elementary theorems such as Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law to generate your desired equations in terms of the unknowns that could be voltages or currents. In this example, we only had currents as unknowns, voltages were given, but this could also be generalized for unknown voltages and currents, right? Now, when you have conductors and capacitors, the story is a bit different. Namely, the system is not linear in real domain. However, 
it is linear in the complex domain because you know capacitors and conductors introduce phase shifts you know the currents and voltages lag and lead depends on if you have a capacitor or a conductor and hence you're faced with delays and times and so forth so it's not linear in the real field however it is linear in the complex field so you you translate each component such as capacitor and conductor in terms of the impedance and thus the system will turn out to be linear in terms of the impedances okay so that's about it if you found this lecture beneficial please leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you have any questions just leave a comment down in the comment section below and i'll make sure i'll get to it as soon as possible